Hello again, beautiful calculus students, continuing our discussion of power series, with this very interesting application of representing uh, functions by power series. So a quick example would be something like this um, geometric series, and earlier in the chapter we showed that this geometric series is the same as this sum, as long as the absolute value of x is less than one, that it'll converge, and this infinite sum will give us this number um, in that condition. So in this sense, we did represent a function by a power series. But let's recall the restrictions on that, right? That this, um, let's write it here again, f of x is one over one minus x. That works on this condition, which means our radius of convergence, r, is one. And this is also centered at zero, okay? So if we wanted to change the center or change the radius of convergence, we'd have to come up with a different function. Okay, so let's look at a different approach to these things. So this is example one, and now we're trying to find a power series for this function centered at zero. Okay, so what we wanna do, we wanna make, let's use blue here, f of x is one over x plus two. We want that to look like a over one minus x, right? That's what we saw before for our geometric series. So in this case, we might say a equals one, and then how do we convert this to one minus x? So let's see, we have, first of all, let's rearrange the x plus two to equal two minus a negative x, okay? So that gives us our minus sign, and we need to have the one there so that we're gonna factor out a two. So this equals two times one minus negative x. Uh, okay, no, this is negative x over two, right? Since I factored out a two. Okay, so we can rewrite our f of x as, let's see, one over two times one minus negative x over two. All right, so that's looking more like our, that's an equal sign there more like a formulation for an infinite geometric series. And by the way, the problem in the book has a four here, which means there should be a four here, and which means there should be a four here. I'm not gonna go back and change all that. We'll just notice that the example I'm doing is a little bit different from the one in the book. All right, so let's move forward here and let's rewrite this. So I have f of x is one over x plus two, which we can rewrite as one over two times, f, uh, times one minus negative x over two. Okay, and then mapping this to our formulation for a geometric series where I know that I can write one over one minus r equals the sum, the infinite sum of a sub n, actually just an a, times r to the n, okay? And so obviously we'll see that this is our r term and this is our a term. So we can finally Right, our function, one over x plus two, is the infinite series, n equals zero to infinity of one half times negative x over two to the n power. Um, and of course, we, it's important to know the radius of convergence on this, and this one we could show pretty quickly has a radius of convergence of one half. And let's see, the interval of convergence is open at both ends. Okay, let's move on. Next example, find the power series for this one, f of x equals just one over x centered at one. Okay, so let's make this look like our geometric series, right? We have, we wanna make our f of x look like a over one minus r. Okay, so we have one over x, I could make that equal to one over one minus one plus x. Okay, that's the same thing. And so rearranging this, I'll get one over one minus one minus x. So our r term, our r term is one minus x, which I will write as r equals negative x minus one. And this shows how we're centered at one now. And so our ratio can be written as so a over one minus r, so that becomes in the format of the sequence, n equals zero to infinity 
of a, which is 1, times our r term, which is negative x minus 1 to the n power, which we'll just write as sum of n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n and x minus 1 to the n, x minus 1 to the n. And that is our answer to this. So that's, this is the power series formulation for this function. And of course, we should note that the um, radius of convergence, x minus 1 has to be less than 1, so the radius is 1. And the integral turns out to be open, so negative 1, sorry, it's actually 0 to 2, because we're centered at 1. So the integral is 0 to 2. So the interval is 0 to 2 on this. Okay, so moving on, first we'll note that in the book we have this very useful table about operations that can be done on power series, just as operations on regular series can be done. And you might want to look at, look at example 3 for a, um, a good example that shows how to combine these operations to get a, a new power series. But notice we move on to example 4, which is pretty cool because we're doing integration on a power series. So find the power series for log of x. Okay, so that sounds perhaps a bit intimidating, but recall, okay, here we are, recall from example two that we showed we have this power series, right? That the power series of one over x centered at one, that's the example we just did, is this. And this happens to be the derivative, right? The derivative with respect to x of log x is one over x, exclamation point. So now we can use this power series and integrate it to get the, um, oops, example. Let me add another slide here. Okay, so we can follow this example. So example four continued is I know that log of x is the integral of one over x dx. And so it's the integral of the series that we just did, n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n times x minus one to the n. And by our rules of um, integration and rules of power series integration, we have a c, big bad bold plus c out front, times the sum of n equals uh, zero to infinity of this integral, which is still negative one out front, x minus one to the n plus one over n plus one. Okay, and that's a pretty neat result. And you could write out some of those terms of the series and check that that is indeed a good approximation for the log x. Okay, final example. Find a power series for arc tan of x centered at zero. And here we're gonna look at another, a composition of series. Okay, so recall that the derivative of arc tan is one over one plus x squared. And we showed earlier that the one over one plus x is this power series. So let's just substitute. We'll substitute um, x squared for x in this expansion. So moving forward, we'll see that uh, one over one plus x squared is the sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n times x squared to the n, which is just sum from zero to infinity, negative one to the n x to the two n. Okay, and then continuing, we know that arc tan is the integral of one over one plus x squared dx. And so our arc tan is gonna be the integral of this series n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n x to the two n. And let's move on and work through that. So we get arc tan of x is our big bad bold plus c plus the sum, so the integral of that uh, earlier series, sum from zero to infinity of negative one to the n, x to the two n plus one over, uh, what was it, oh yeah, two n plus one. This is pretty cool stuff. I'll put a big happy face here because this gave us a very simple way of finding an expansion for the arctan by using our tricks of calculus, of in, in this case integration, but don't forget differentiation works in this as well. So pretty neat stuff. Okay, be sure to read the chapter and understand all the examples there, especially the pretty neat 
Um, example of example six is pretty cool. You know, ways of estimating pi. That's kind of a, kind of a fun game mathematicians like to play. Okay, so I'll stop this here.